This is a video discussing how to access the soils information on the web. In order to do this, we're going to have to understand the internet browsers that are available to us to use. And on the screen you'll see four different types of browsers. The first one is Microsoft Edge, which is the icon and uh, the tool that Windows 10 uses. Internet Explorer is the older version of the Windows Internet Explorer. Google Chrome, and then also Mozilla Firefox, or commonly known as Firefox. Any of these browsers will be able to gain you access to the web to be able to uh, use the Web Soil Survey and the Soil Web applications. We're going to begin this process by just using Microsoft Edge since it's the default that is being used on Windows 10. We'll double click on it and it'll open up and it'll say where to next. And we're going to search for Web Soil Survey. And it's going to take us to a list of all the different sites that we can see on Web Soil Survey. We'll click on Home and what this will do is bring up the home page for Web Soil Survey. Web Soil Survey has a lot of helps written into it. The uh, first thing that you'll notice is it, it welcomes you and it talks about a uh, brief, uh, brief uh, understanding of the soils information and, and what you're going to find right here in the first two paragraphs. Scrolling down this list you'll see that there are four basic steps. The first step is to define your area of interest. You'll have a, ver a variety of ways of being able to do that. The second is being able to view the soil map itself. The third is being able to explore that soil map data. And then the fourth is the checking out of the shopping cart. All of this information that you will go through and, and uh, review can all be saved and built into your own little manuscript for that particular area of interest and it is all free. All you got to do is uh, use the reports and the maps to build that particular manuscript that you want and it's really good for consultants to be able to use so that they can include this in any of their products that they deliver to their customers. So on the right hand side we have a, a variety of hyperlinks that uh, provide even more details and more information and go into a lot more information than what I'm going to be covering in this video. We also have announcements to be able to identify, uh, keep you informed of any changes that are going to uh, be occurring in the future or that have already a change, that have already occurred. And then also some very specific helps. I want help with how to get started with Web Soil Survey, and that's essentially what this video is. Uh, how to use Web Soil Survey? How do you get online help? What are the known problems and the workarounds that are available to me? What are the frequently asked questions? And if I am going to publish information for this, how do I cite that I got it from the Web Soil Survey? So that gives you an overview of the front page. The next uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the Start button, which is Start Web Soil Survey. And you have to make sure that uh, you have your pop-ups allowed for this to work. If this does not work like this, then check your uh, pop-up blocker on your browser and uh, allow Web Soil Survey access to be able to uh, uh, pop up a new window. As we were saying earlier, what's your first step? Your first step is identifying where you want to go, what do you want to look at. You have to create an area of interest. We have the capabilities of importing an, a an area of interest. I'm going to be using the term AOI. You can create it from a shapefile. If you've used uh, ArcGIS and you've created a shapefile, you can import it either as a shapefile or as a zip file. We're not going to be using that particular on this uh, basic uh, video. You can use an address. You can use the state and county. For instance, if I want to look at Kansas and I want to look at Saline County, all of the soil surveys were created using a soil survey area. And east of the Rockies, that area is typically the counties. West of the Rockies, that area is uh, pieces and parts of counties. 
You can also utilize the latitude and longitude, the public land survey, the Bureau of Land Management data uh, boundaries, uh, Department of Defense uh, areas, Forest Service, National Park, and hydrologic units. To start off, I'm going to come in here and type in an address 2873. And we're going to view that. And it's going to take you right to that particular location. I could have zoomed in here. However, I chose to use the tools available on the address bar. All right, speaking of tools, we have a zoom in icon here. We have a zoom out icon. This toolbar allows you to click on it and move and pan around on specific areas. You can also go back to the full extent of the CONUS map that you saw here a minute ago. You can <clears throat> zoom to the area of, entry, uh, area of extent. We can go back to where I was previous on this map. I can go forward to where this map was. If I want information, I can click on the information. If I click on information, it brings up a box down below. And it says, to identify it, you have to put a point on the map. I'll do that here in a minute. You also have a ruler, and this ruler will allow you to actually uh, measure distance on, the, uh, on this screen. We also have soil data availability. It will identify what is available as far as the soil lines or the uh, soil data. And then you have two methods of creating your area of interest. One by clicking a rectangular, the other one by putting in multiple points. And remember that when you put in multiple points, the control click closes that particular field. Now what do I mean by this? I'm going to use the rectangle, and I'm just going to come in here and grab this particular rectangle. And this now creates, this is step two, this is creating my area of interest. And you'll see it's all hashed. And this is now my area of interest. This is where I want to see the soils information for this particular field. I can now come over to the tab. It says soil map and I can click on soil map. And here is the soil map for that area of interest right here. I can click on any of these particular uh, hyperlinked uh, map units and I can get it information on that particular map unit. So if I want to look at Longford 3 to 7 percent slopes, I can click on that and here comes a, uh, up pops a uh, very general uh, description for this particular map unit and it tells me a lot of information about this particular map unit. For instance, you'll notice that in this map unit I've got uh, this map unit is a long for silt, long three to seven, but inside this I've also got a Lancaster, a Crete, a Hobbs, and a Dalgo, a Headville, and even a Qualls. And it gives you an explanation as to where these um, minor components occur. So 5% of this map unit is made up of a Lancaster that exists on the hill slopes, on the back slope and side slopes of that particular map unit. And... Uh, you can read down through the rest of these and see where all the other ones are. So remember, a map unit contains more than one soil. That's going to be important when you're dealing with any type of sanitary facility because you're wanting to try to get the information about that particular soil where that particular site is located. So, when we come in here and we look at this, we've got uh, a soil map. Now let's go in and take a look at some of the information that we have about the soils. To do that, you go to Soil Data Explorer, and you click on Soil Data Explorer. And you'll notice the first thing that comes up are suitabilities and limitations for use. And these are the interpretations that have been created for a variety of different issues. And for sanitarians, the sanitary facilities allows you to have access to what the national or even some of the state-based information is on septic tank absorption fields and the different varieties of septic systems that are allowed out there. So if I looked at septic tank absorption field 
absorption field, pardon me. You can see that uh, I have the ability to look at the description and I have the ability to look at the rating. We're going to click on view description real quick and this is the information about this specific interpretation. This is the most commonly uh, type of gravity fed uh, sanitary facility that we have. You'll notice that the pipe is laid down at 24 inches and <clears throat> this is basic criteria is that the trench is dug backfilled with some sort of gravel material. The pipe is laid at 24 inches and then uh, covered with uh, soil material on top. And these are the soil properties that are uh, basically reviewed during the process of this particular interpretation. And to look at the rating, all I got to do is click on the view rating. And you'll notice we have stoplight colors, red, green, and uh, yellow. And the green would be that means that there are no soil properties that will impact the um, uh, design. Yellow means there's issues that you need to take a look at. Red means there's several issues that you may want to look at in order to be able to overcome the limitations on that particular soil. But what do we know about that? How do we know about that? Well, if you move on down the page, you'll notice that we were looking at the Longford soil here a minute ago. This mapping at Longford silt loam, 3 to 7, it's mapping at 3402. So to give you an idea of where 3402 <coughs> actually occurs, it's occurring over in this area right here. So we're going to come over here and we're going to look at 3402. And you'll notice that in the Longford soil, we have a slow water movement. That means your case, your uh, permeability is very slow or slow. In the Lancaster soils, we have depth of bedrock and we also have slow water movement. In the Crete soil that's in this map unit, we have another slow water movement. You can see that the permeability on these soils is, is going to have to be overcome whenever we design the system. And then, of course, on the headville, you'll notice the depth of bedrock. So there's a potential that you're going to hit bedrock on a headville. So here are the soils that you're likely to occur within that mapping and the percent of each one of those that you're going to see. And this is critical that you understand how this system works so that you look at all the different soils that are available to you before you go out and start looking at that particular on-site investigation. And then once again, here's all the information that, uh, about this particular interpretation. So that gives you a scenario that you can work with. Now I can create a printable version right here, or I can add this to my shopping cart. And each one of these reports and each one of these particular maps that we create can go to a shopping cart system. And that shopping cart, at the very end, when you're done with all the uh, reports and maps that you want to create, you can come right over here to the shopping cart and then be able to download that as a product that you can provide to your customer. Let's move on to the next tab, soil properties and qualities. And let's go into a little bit more detail on properties that are available to you. Um, first thing you'll notice on the left hand side here, we've got just a, a few number of uh, maps here. You can look at the chemical properties, you can look at the erosion properties, the soil health, the physical properties, the qualities and features and the water features. And, uh, I believe we're going to look at the percent sand. Well, better yet, let's look at the percent clay. And so here, we can look at, we're creating a map of the percent clay and let's say that what we want to do is we want to look at the depth of 24 to 60 inches and we want to see what is the clay content for this particular area right here on all these soils within that particular, pardon me, with all these map units. And we're looking at the dominant component, so we're going to look at the Longford and the Lancaster and all those. We're going to take in what the weighted average is between 24 and 60 inches, and we're going to view this rating. And here you can see the clay contents as they've been generated from the database. 
And then you can also look here at the map that it's created and you can compare the symbol down here to the writing and be able to identify what is the clay contents within the 24 to 60 inch uh, zone that we're going to be studying when we're out in the field. So when we come over here and look at the Longford, you can see that we've got 31% uh, clay. So that we've got a pretty tight clay, but it's not as bad as the Hidalgo. That, that Hidalgo map in it has 45% clay. So you can see how this can, use, can be used to be able to uh, assist you in your pre-planning phase when you go out, be able to look at the different types of soils. And then we also have soil reports. These are not maps. These are strictly the reports. And I can come over to the uh, <clears throat> sanitary facilities and I click on sanitary facilities and I can look at sewage disposal and I can view the report. And here is the actual report and it's only providing me the information on the dominant soil. But this is a nice report that can be printed out. <coughs> and if you want all the soils, all you do is come back to that particular report, include the minor soils, and view the report. And now we'll be able to see, for example, uh, let's go back down to where we were looking on our Longford silt loam. Our Longford is a very limited soil. Pardon me, I forgot to mention to you that... Uh, Here's our septic tank absorption field and our sewage lacoons. So we have both of these in the same report. And Longford is very limited with slow water movement. And then Lancaster is very limited, depth of bedrock. And it gives you the rating classes on each one of these to be able to give you an idea of why these soils uh, are not suited for this particular purpose. And if, there, if we have a limitation, what's going to have to be overcome? For example, on the Hidalgo, the depth of bedrock and the slow water movement, we're going to have to develop a design for the septic system that will overcome these depth of bedrock and these slow water movements. And as I said, each one of these reports could be added to a shopping cart and then at the end added to a, a printable version. So this gives you an idea, a rough idea, on how to start with your uh, uh, internet browser. And then from your browser, all you're going to do is search for Web Soil Survey. And it takes you to this home page. And then starting the Web Soil Survey allows you to come over and create your area of interest. And when you're done with that particular area of interest that you've created, you can always clear this and start a new area of interest if you have other areas that you're interested in looking at. For example, if you had multiple subdivisions that you were working on. You could clear that one, go over to your other subdivision and create the soils map for that subdivision. So if there's any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can reach me at P-F-I-N-N-E-L-L. -L, that's pfinnell at yahoo.com. And uh, I'll be able to help you with uh, more information on this. That finishes today's video on how to access and utilize the basics of Web Soul Survey.